Okay, well, I want to welcome you tonight to our virtual open house uh, for the Master of Archives and Records Administration program. And our agenda is a brief one, but it takes us a while to get through it. Uh, we want to introduce you to the iSchool and to the program, uh, explain what the Mars degree is and how it's composed of uh, a number of courses, uh, and then what it's like to be an online student to actually participate in those courses, and then we'll have time for questions and answers. Uh, I'm the person there at the top, uh, Dr. Franks, and uh, I'm really excited about this program. I think it uh, fits perfectly with the needs for archivists and records managers to see uh, the entire process from creation all the way through preservation. Uh, we have uh, Dr. Sandy Hirsch as our director of the School of Information. You'll see her name sometimes on uh, websites, and uh, she does hold open forums for students. Uh, Dr. Linda Main is our associate director. She's a person who has all the answers as far as uh, courses, curriculum, um, and uh, rules and regulations. Uh, Sheila Gertrude is the online student advisor. So I'm the academic advisor for all of them, our students, but Sheila is a person who can straighten you out when you're trying to get uh, permission numbers for courses and things like that. So you'll see her name quite often on her website as well. And then our primary faculty, uh, you heard uh, Dr. Lisa Dalby uh, just a minute ago, and uh, then we have Jason Kaltenbacher, uh, who uh, teaches a couple of courses for us, and he also is the coordinator for the new informatics program. Uh, and then Joshua Zimmerman, who is an iSchool lecturer right now, he's teaching our uh, research methods course specifically for archivists and records managers. Uh, and then our uh, student assistant is Kenna Walker, and uh, uh, Kenna has a little message here for you. Uh, she uh, works for me as a graduate student assistant, uh, and you'll hear about some of the things that she accomplishes later on in uh, our presentation. Uh, I'm going to turn this over to Lisa now, and Lisa's going to talk about the uh, program itself. So Lisa, do you want to take over, and I'll be happy to move the slides for you when you're ready. Thanks so much, Pat, and uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to the open house. I am very excited to be speaking with you all. I am speaking to you today from actually Toronto, Ontario, Canada, where I live, and I have been teaching in the Mara program since 2009 which means that I've had the opportunity to teach a number of students, all of the students in the MARA program. Again, welcome, and I'm happy to answer any questions or if you want to contact me after, the, after this session, I'm, I'm open for that as well. So next slide. So the, the benchmarks. The original framework of the program was really bent, uh, was really made on a, a few important benchmarks. Uh, the, when developed, when the when the Mara program was developed, uh, the what was really considered for both course content as well as the overarching Mara program framework was the ARMA course competencies, core competencies, and ARMRA, for those of you who don't know, is our International Records Management Professional Association, and also the Society of American Archivists Guidelines for Graduate Program Education. What is also really important component of the development of the program was the uh, certification of three very important certifications in our field and much of the course content is as well as the framework of the program was developed on the certification uh, a, 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 an analysis of the certifications of the Institute of Certified Records Management which is called the CRM Certified Records Manager and the Academy of Certified Archivists and a little bit more recently, the Information Governance Professional Certification uh, from our ARMA a Professional Association. What I think is really great about the program is that by competing uh, the program, you will qualify 
and we'll talk a little bit about that later, you'll qualify to take many of these certifications just based on the course content uh, that you've taken within the program. So this is really an exciting opportunity uh, that we want to talk to you about today is that uh, our, our, the iSchool has developed uh, a really special relationship with one of the certifications I talked to you about in the previous slide with the Institute of Certified Records Managers that if you take, uh, if, you, if you qualify as you graduate from the MARA program, you automatically become a certified records administrator. And this really bypasses you taking uh, 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 five out of six required course uh, uh, exams. So I think uh, in recognition of the content of the MAR program, uh, it really, the, 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 it really, it really goes a long way in preparing you for certification. In fact, upon graduation, you become a certified records uh, uh, analyst. And if you just take one more exam within the certified records management program, uh, you become, uh, which is part six, you become a certified uh, records manager. So it, this is just really a really great uh, kickstart to your career upon graduation. And it's just a, a, an excellent uh, relationship that we have developed with our uh, certification accreditation bodies within the field. In addition to the certified records management uh, body, the Academy of Certified Archivists, also an accrediting body, has also reviewed and approved all of the 10 core courses in the MARA, MARA program. And so what will happen is that upon graduation, again, you will bypass sort of many of the, those preliminary steps which require you to prove that you've you know, taking courses and whatnot, these courses are, our courses are already approved. And really all that would be required was you to sort of register for the, the exam and then you would become a certified records archivist. So the MARA core competencies. The MARA program has 10 overarching core competencies, and really these are the objectives of the program and really our commitment to you. This is what you will learn uh, and be competent in, in as you graduate from the program. I don't wanna read them all out, but these, these core competencies are really the foundations of the profession. And note that many of these program core competencies map directly to competencies in each of the courses that you will be assigned to. And even we, even as instructors, map these core competencies, core competencies to assignments. So, you know, and, and again, we can, you know, highlight, highlight a few, which the competencies cover ethics and, uh, standards and legal and regulatory requirements and having a global perspective and you know being in tune with information technologies and um, preservation again I won't read them out but it, what is really important about these core competencies and I will stress on them again in, in a later slide is that you will be required to demonstrate your competencies in, in what we call an e-portfolio. Before I jump into the e-portfolio, I just want to highlight the required courses within the program. Students are required to take 14 courses, uh, 11 of which are required, and you're seeing the 11 here, and 11 really within our program, uh, each course is, 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 is called 13 units. And, and so then you would have 33 credits. But just to like to break down the required co uh, courses, and I will talk a little bit about our electives in a future slide, is that we begin the program with sort of what I call the introductory courses, which is MARA 200 and MARA 204, which really are the introductory courses. We talk, you know, you'll be exposed to 
records and information, the records and information professional. And then we will, you know, you will talk, you will be exposed to just the, you know, 204, which is our management course. And then as you go from 200 and 204, we go into, uh, in the program, what I call the life cycle management courses, where we will get courses right into like records creation and appraisal storage. We'll get, do a deep dive into digital records and digital records management, uh, content management and, and digital preservation. And then we move, as you become closer to the end of your program, we, 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 we take courses that are more seminal, uh, sort of seminar type courses, and we focus on specific in like hot topics within the industry. And currently two hot topics within, in, in the industry are information governance and information assurance. So those courses will uh, closer to the end of your program. And then as Pat, uh, mentioned there's a research methods course that is required and we uh, close the close your educational program what is called an e-portfolio which I'll talk about in a, in a minute uh, we also have the opportunity to take internships uh, which we'll talk a little bit about as, as well which is an important part of the MARA program so if you've heard, heard me talk a little bit about the e-portfolio, so students are required to demonstrate knowledge of the 10 core competencies that you saw me speak to in an earlier slide. For each of these core competencies, students will be required to demonstrate that they understand it and what the core, core competency means to them, and they need to provide evidence that they meet this requirement Generally, that means submitting, you know, two or three course assignments for each comp. And what is really great is that creating an, this kind of e-portfolio of all of your work at the end of the program, which is kind of like a, what we call a, a capstone uh, project, it really just demonstrates that that you know it just showcases your work and I've seen students tell me that they have taken their e-portfolio and really and turned it more into a professional e-portfolio or even just use their e-portfolio and it really helped them get their first job uh, and or that promotion that they were looking for and it really is the e-portfolio is really just it, it's a testament to, to your work at, at the MAR pro, at the program. So, so course rotation, uh, this is just a sample of course rotation, for, for example. Students entering the course, uh, the program usually, generally take three years to complete the program. But this is just really what we're showing you to here is just a helpful guide, but is by no means the rotation that you have to take. I've seen students complete the program in two years by taking, you know, three courses a semester, uh, but this is a general course rotation, which generally takes three years, which will just take you, you know, to take two courses a, a semester and maybe and one summer course, but that is not necessarily the, the, the track you need to take. You can take up to seven years to take the program, which, you know, in that schedule, you will be taking one course a semester. And what, what students really love about the program, and we really see this according to our exit surveys, which students are, who are graduating, you know, have the opportunity to comment on our program, is that they just love this flexibility of the program where literally they can finish their degree in two years or if they, you know, are, are want to do it in seven, that's also an option. And if required, they can take a term off and for whatever reason, for you know, family or work responsibilities. And what, what we really wanna stress about this slide is that you are not alone when you are picking uh, your courses or, or figuring out the rotation that is specific for you. Dr. Franks, as your advisor, will absolutely help you and guide you through this process. Your faculty advisor, as well as your course instructors, myself, will always help you in this selection process. 
In order to allow students sort of the opportunity to customize their program based on their own interests, students can select uh, in addition to those uh, 11 courses of uh, required courses that I uh, outlined in a previous slide, students have the option to select three additional electives from the, the wider uh, MLIS program during this program. And here you can see from this extensive listing, you can pick from these three and as you can see, there's some really awesome courses like digital curation, information privacy, project management, web. I often say that I wish I could be a student again so that I, you know, had the opportunity to go back and take some of these like really cutting edge and relevant courses in our profession. And this list uh, of courses is reviewed by our program advisory committee. Uh, we have a, a committee of, that is made up of really industry experts in the field that advise us on the program. And so really this listing ensures that the electives provided to you really provide you with real skills you need for success in the profession. And I think the electives are really just an excellent addition to and complement to the MAR core courses that I outlined previously. Also within the MAR program, students can choose to take an advanced certificate to complement and enhance their degree. And so in the wider SJSU uh, iSchool program, there are three what we call pathways to certification. One is in digital asset management, one is in information governance, assurance, and security, and one is in digital uh, data analytics and decision making. So these are, if you select kind of your, your electives or want to take a, a one or two extra courses, these are really great uh, certificates that you can take while you're at the school to, uh, you know, to accompany your degree and they, uh, they can easily be uh, accomplished by just selecting the right target electives and I think they just, they just look awesome on your resume if, uh, if, you, if you can manage to do that. So the, one of the most popular ones, so the easiest and what most students who enter the program do is, 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 is the information governance assurance and digital security certification pathway. If you just take, you're required to take two courses anyway, which is the uh, information governance course and the information security, uh, information assurance class, if you just take that if you just take that one extra course in information cybersecurity, which you could take as an elective, by taking that one course, it automatically uh, gets you this certification. So uh, it's really important to, to plan your electives, but I just think this is like a, an extra nice to have. And I think that takes me back to you, Pat, thanks. Well, thank you, Lisa. And now we'll take a look at the courses that are offered in the spring. If you were uh, joining us next fall, the uh, first two courses you take would be a little different. I'll me mention that in a minute. But if you decide to join us this spring, the uh, application period is still open. Uh, and uh, you would start at the end of January. Uh, and in the spring, uh, I teach one of the courses that we recommend that our students take. It's MAR 283, and it's a, a fun one. Uh, we start in um, Office 365 and SharePoint. So students learn about all of the components for Office 365 in the cloud, of course. And then SharePoint, we spend quite a bit of time on uh, even getting into the records retention uh, and labeling aspects of uh, SharePoint. Uh, then we go to the middle of the term, about seven and a half weeks in, 
And uh, we take a look at what would happen if we have records then that have to be kept permanently. Uh, we concentrate on a, a preservation system. It's uh, by Preservica. It's a commercial product. The vendor has been very kind and allows us to use it for free. It's very uh, uh, interesting and it allows us to uh, ingest digital objects, transform them into other formats, to make them visible on the website. So we use WordPress for that. So uh, this is just one of the courses that uh, you would be um, suggested, recommended to take in the spring. Uh, you'll see it's an ACA pre-approved course. All of our courses except for internship organizational consulting project are uh, ACA approved. That's the Academy of Certified Archivists. So what that means is if you go to register to take the exam, they look at your coursework to see if you have the foundation uh, to give you approval to sit for the exam. And uh, all of our courses, uh, uh, combined give you that uh, approval. So uh, you'll see the little ACA, I think, by almost every one of our courses. Um, there are prere prerequisites on this one. Uh, however, we moved it down a little bit in our program. So actually, if you're a brand new student, I'd be giving you a permission number to take this. Uh, also in the spring, we recommend one of those courses that Lisa mentioned that uh, go along with the records life cycle. It's Records Creation, Appraisal, and Retention by Jason Kaltenbacher. And uh, this is, uh, along with 283, the two courses we would suggest you take if you want to complete the program within a little under three years. Take two in the fall, two in the spring, one each of two summer sessions, and you will be able to graduate uh, the May before the or end of the uh, three-year period, or for those of you starting in the spring, the December before the end of your three-year period. Uh, there is a third course in the spring, and Lisa mentioned that some people graduate as early as two years, uh, and that's uh, not the majority by any means, but we've had more people do that. What they're doing is doubling up a little bit. They're taking at least three courses a semester and a few in the summer, and Lisa teaches a uh, 249 Management of Digital Data Information and Records, uh, and uh, this course could be your third um, MARA elect or MARA required course if you'd like to take it in the spring and move through the uh, program a little faster. Uh, this is an example of what our courses look like. People often ask me, you know, what, what is it like to be a student? And I have uh, Kenna here, we'll uh, have her talk a little bit uh, later and she can explain to you what her feelings are about being a student online. But this is how I set up my course. Each week I have a module that opens up. Mine open up on Monday and then close the following Sunday night. Other people may start on a different day and close uh, at the end of their week, uh, which will be a different week. Uh, for example, some open on Sunday and close on Saturday night. Uh, this one, when you see the module, uh, what's um, included here are lectures. Uh, some of them, many of them have videos within them. They have links to outside readings. You'll see discussions here. Uh, my discussions, I ask you to uh, respond to my discussion by Thursday night, and then uh, respond to somebody else's post by the following Sunday. So you have a week to participate in the discussion. Somebody once asked me, are these mini uh, papers? I said, well, yeah, I guess you could think about them that way because you're trying to uh, write uh, intelligently about a topic. It's not just a discussion, what did you think about this? It's an actual topic where you're expected to do a little research. We'll have some type of reference to support what you're saying, um, but it's, it's a great learning exercise. That's not the only focus of my week, so in this class, because we do a lot of work online, uh, you uh, don't uh, pay for the software that you use, you're just brought into these two programs, and you'll see that in Mod 2 for uh, this class, you're already learning to create a SharePoint site and declaring your record. And uh, you would be graded by me going into SharePoint and checking to see that you actually did that. And then you'll see down at the bottom questions, optional, not monitored, you help each other. And uh, it's a very collaborative environment. Our, our program is so wonderful because of the students that are in it uh, who help each other along the way. And that's, that's what we hope is happening. Uh, 
we have a jobs analysis that's conducted each year. Kenna, uh, who you'll hear from shortly, uh, is working on one for this year, but our most recent one was published last January. And uh, we identified uh, jobs in different groups. We look at archival jobs, archival records jobs, it's a mix, records manager jobs, information governance jobs, and then a lot of them are going toward records and information governance uh, combination we're seeing. Uh, that information governance. I think the first time we looked at it, it was like maybe 1%, and now we're up to 7% there, and uh, also a mix of records and IG uh, uh, titles that uh, are advertised. Uh, statistics, uh, some of the statistics uh, we look at, uh, where are the openings, and uh, quite a few of them are in education, government, and nonprofits, but you see that's closely followed by business. And then financial, energy, and aerospace. So uh, we have uh, a lot of industries that uh, need the skills that our students possess, and uh, you're quite capable of filling those positions. An interesting, uh, I'll get to the slide in a minute, an interesting comment about um, was made by one of our advisory committee members who has uh, interviewed our MARA students as well as students from other schools. And uh, she commented on uh, the inability for a number of students coming to understand the management aspects uh, of what's going on in the workplace. She's the state archivist for Vermont, actually. Uh, and um, she's very pleased with the emphasis that we have on uh, management, administration, leadership within our program. Um, salaries for Women IG, of course, we like to show you this one because it looks pretty good here, uh, but it depends on what you're looking for. If you're just getting into the field, it may be that your salary is going to be lower if you're making a fresh start in a new field. However, if you have experience, uh, it, it could be up in that middle or higher uh, end of the um, uh, salary range. And now what I'm going to do is turn this over to Kenna, who I said is one of our students and could tell you exactly what it feels like to be a student here. But she's also going to be describing things that she does to enrich our MARA program. So Kenna, would you like to take over? Yeah, hi guys, thanks Pat. Uh, I'm Kenna, I'm Pat's assistant and I'm also a MARA student. I'm about to enter my third and last year. Um, so I came in special session and I'll be graduating um, December of 2020. So just over a year from now. Uh, right now I um, work for a law firm in Cincinnati. I'm our records supervisor here. Um, and that's kind of how I found the MARA program. Uh, my undergrad was in sociology, criminology, and women and gender studies, so not quite a fit, but, um, you know, with the law firm, it really sent me over to the record side, um, and I love it so much, so that's how I found Mara. Thank you. Um, so like Pat said, I do a lot with um, our social media, um, pretty much anything Pat wants me to do, but a lot with our social media. So on this slide, you'll see um, our iSchool Curriculum Center. Um, and on this page, you can find dates uh, and information relating to the iSchool. You can find our calendar. It's just a really good resource to keep in mind uh, as you go through school, and it kind of helps keep you on track uh, with everything going on. And then at the bottom, you can see our iSchool student blog. Uh, this is written by our current students, and it uh, provides you with important information, resources, um, and other useful advice, including posts about our courses, careers, online learning, time management, and more. Um, and you can see that we did in August um, a day in the life of our high school student, Kyle. Um, he is um, he's working in the field, and he just uh, told us all about um, you know his time management and how he um, gets through school and work, and he has kids and a wife. Um, He's kind of Superman, so he's, I believe he's on par with me. He's been in a bunch of my classes, so um, it's just something good to read, especially if you guys are coming in with um, families and, you know, full-time jobs like a lot of us are, so it, it's a good thing. Next, you can see our Mara blog. This is something that I uh, manage and write for, so um, this is more specific to our program tomorrow, to Records and Archives, um, and we just write about our current news, maybe something that came up. Um, uh, about records and or archives. Um, and then we also do student spotlights here. Um, like you can see, 
Uh, we did one on our current student, Sam Henley. Um, he's had a bunch of good internship experience, so his spotlight was really um, interesting and good to read for students, uh, you know, as we go through the program. Uh, this is our student, uh, Nick, oh gosh, Majewski. I'm sure I'm butchering that, but he was just uh, elected to serve on the Archive Space Board as the Vice President of the Governance Board, and we're super excited for him. Um, Archive Space is a software that's used uh, by archivists, created by archivists, so it's pretty popular in our field, and uh, he's just a, a great example of what you can do with, um, with our degree. Uh, next, you can see our Facebook group. Um, it's just SJSU Mara. Um, you're welcome to join. And there's just a couple questions, I think, um, you know, to make sure that people that should be in are in and people that should not be in our group are not. Um, but just, you know, fill those out. We'll, we'll add you to our group and you can interact with um, our current students. Um, I think Lisa and Pat are on there. I'm on there. Um, and we post um, you know, general announcements, things that are coming up for our program, for the iSchool. Um, and it's just a good place to find a community and to keep in touch. I know going to school online, sometimes you don't feel like, um, you know, super involved in your school. And this is just a great way um, to get involved. You can see um, this picture that Pat posted. We were all um, at Infocon, so it was me and Pat. Um, and some of our other students and friends of our school. So that was really cool. Um, and we just shared that with everybody so they could see. Uh, this, this you can see um, some of the webinars that we do. This is just one, um, there's a lot, I think we shoot for two a semester. Um, and they are held on a variety of, of topics. You can see um, Helen Strzok, she's the president and CEO of Kaizen InfoSource. And she, I gave a guest lecture on implementing ECRM or ECM solutions. Um, that was back in September. And if you go to the next slide, we just had uh, Dr. Dalby talking on GDPR, um, something that's super big in our field right now, something to really focus on. Um, and these webinars are held live, but they're always recorded. So you can view them anytime uh, on the iSchool website under webcasts. Um, I think it takes just a couple days from the time the webinar was held to the time we get it posted, but they're always available to see and you can always look up um, different topics that you're interested in if, you know, maybe GDPR isn't something you want to learn about, but something else. Um, there's hundreds on there. Uh, so we do have an upcoming webinar. This is with Junia Yasinov and she is um, a former student uh, working in the Capuchin um, archives in Detroit. Um, this is not about monkeys, although you might think it is, but she did a lot for um, the province of St. Joseph of the Capuchin Order, um, and she's giving a presentation um, coming up in the spring. Uh, she has done so much since she started this job, and it's just so relevant to everything that we're learning. Um, she walked into this uh, archive repository with really no organization or anything like that. So it's coming up. It's going to be super interesting. So that's going to be on February 4th. So in this uh, slide, you can see we have something we call the CARA. And it's a virtual center for archives and records administration. And it takes place in Second Life. Um, there's a lot to learn about Second Life, but it's this virtual world. You can see those pictures on the bottom. Uh, and we have all sorts of, um, you know, activities in there, things to learn and look around in. Um, you can interact with classmates. And we recently just had this virtual worlds versus virtual reality smackdown event that was great. And um, it's actually going on the road. It's going to be at um, the Open Simulator Community Conference in December which is super exciting. So um, the webcast, I think it just went up. If not, it's going to go up um, as a replay if you'd like to see that. But um, we have events in there. It's a really great place to connect as well. That's it. That's all for me.
Thank you, Kenna. You can see Kenna's really excited and involved in her work. And uh, uh, we always have a student assistant who handles most of the outreach for students. In fact, one of our former students is the one who put together the Facebook page in the first place because she thought we needed one. So uh, if you uh, are part of our program, uh, you could help us grow and, and improve along the way with your ideas. Uh, but what I wanted to talk to you about now is, is why uh, San Jose and why the MARA program. Uh, these are taken from exit surveys, students tell us that it's the quality faculty uh, who uh, have work experience, not just teaching experience, and draw upon that work experience, bring it into the classroom. Uh, the program itself, the technology that we use, but most of all, the other students. So we as instructors learn from our students, I, I think sometimes as much as, as they learn from us. Um, opportunity to learn from our experts, as you saw through our MAR guest lecture series and through our student uh, Second Life activities. Uh, and then also the cost. It's pretty uh, um, standard. Since I started here in, what, 2008, the program started and the price has not changed. It's $474 a unit. You pay only for the number of your courses you take each semester. So if you take a three-credit course, it would be three times 474. If you took only a one credit course, it would be 474. Uh, but regardless of how you package it together, you have 42 units, which comes to $19,908 for the entire master's degree program. You can take between two years and seven years. Uh, after seven years, your courses that you took early on start dropping off because they're old. Uh, they're obsolete. So much happens in this field that we have to keep up. So uh, it's very difficult to catch up if you get to that seven year mark. But uh, you do have that long. And we've had people take four years, five years uh, that I know of. I know of one person who completed it just under seven. Uh, the application process, uh, you're required to have a bachelor's degree with a 3.0 GPA, a minimum or any master's degree. Uh, if you talk to our students, you'll see that they come from all kinds of backgrounds. My background is business. so. Uh, a number of people come from history, communications. We've had them from, uh, I've had paralegals uh, in our program. Um, and as Kenna mentioned, her background is quite diverse as well. Now, when I say the three-point GPA, uh, if you uh, don't have that for the entire program, we don't do this, but the university graduate admissions office does. They'll look at your last 60 uh, units of credit to see if that is a 3.0. If so, you're still admitted. If not, uh, and a number of students uh, that currently are with us were in this position, uh, they are uh, go back and take a few more courses at another school to uh, bring that GPA up so that they can apply again application period for spring. As I mentioned, we're still taking applications until December 1st, and uh, you have until December 20th to get all of your documentation in classes start. I think it's January 24th, around there. And then the application period for fall, it's also open right now. It closes June 1st, so you want to get your application in before then, and all of your documentation in by June 20th. Uh, now, we do have some scholarships for new students. These are uh, directors, uh, scholarships for excellence. And uh, if you are um, admitted to the program, uh, you would be able to uh, register for those, apply for those. Uh, this uh, screenshot here says December 2018, but what you want to do this year is get it in uh, by December 2019. If you're uh, accepted by then, you're eligible to apply for the scholarship. Um, and uh, I see this one here uh, down at the bottom on the right. Um, we have a deadline, oh, actually November uh, 1st, 2019, so maybe that's a little beyond. So I hope some of you have already applied uh, and were able to do that. Uh, but you will be able to um, be introduced to other opportunities for scholarships. They can never pay for your entire program, so you have to be sure that you have financing in order to be able to do that financial aid. We have an office to help you work through that as well. 
All right, so for more information about the program, uh, everything is online because we are an online program. So if you visit the MARA website, you should be able to read through the materials, but there's a lot there. And it's sometimes difficult to find exactly what you want. If that's the case, uh, just send me an email and I'll be able to answer your questions. And I also will probably be providing you with some links so you could get some additional information uh, from the website itself. And um, that's it for our canned program. So what we want to do now is, is stop talking and ask uh, any of you if you have questions. If you do, you could unmute your uh, mics and uh, just go ahead and ask us a question. Or you could put it in the uh, chat area and we'll take a look there as well. I would like to know, so I'm working as an information governance analyst right now, mm -hmm. and I average nine hour, 10 hour work day. Um, how many classes realistically per semester? Yeah, no more than two. Uh, and when I was doing my master's, I took one. I took two twice and fell asleep at the tub running and flooded the house. Oh my goodness, okay. <laughs> Four children and working full time. Uh, so, you know, you, you know yourself and, and what your other obligations are. Uh, but uh, some people in your situation take one, some actually take two. Uh, no more than that for sure. Okay. Um, as a student, I would say uh, I also work hours like that. Um, and I think it's been super manageable. Um, once you get into uh, kind of a routine of it all, it's, it's very. Uh, kind of easy to figure out time and it, I don't want to say go through the motions but really go through the motions. Um, I think it, it, t it does take a little bit. I think it took me um, about a, just a semester to um, fully adjust. I think if you're already in the field you'll have an easier time. Um, not that it's not feasible but you already know some of the language and, and things like that. So I think um, you can definitely do it with two classes. It's not it's not overwhelming. Thank you. Do we have any more questions? You've got Ken on the line. She'll tell you like it is. She doesn't hold back. <laughs> I have no stake in the race. So I, tell you. I also had a question. This is Amanda again about group activities within the program. Um, so if you were, if, are there group activities or is most of the work since it's online independent? Mm -mm. Uh, no, uh, I have a, a group. Uh, I'll answer Elizabeth in a minute. I have group activities in all of my classes and uh, it works really well. Uh, we're all um, doing our work whenever we can. So your groups, uh, we put in mine, I, I put little discussion areas aside and just assign groups as a matter of fact, their, their projects are due in uh, December, the last day of class. And uh, they then decide how they're going to get together. You have the ability to create your own Zoom sessions just like this. Some people do that. Uh, I've seen some sneaky ones uh, kind of team up and they all live in the Bay Area. Twice they did this and actually met at somebody's house. Uh, but most of them will figure out how to uh, communicate the best way they can, either through uh, some of them Google, work on their projects that way. Uh, we still have our SharePoint open in my class and I have a lot of students working on repositories that they're going to move into their group projects. So it's up to the students and it, it is a challenge. It's a challenge for all of us to work with people from different time zones, but it is feasible and it works out very well from what I've seen. Lisa, what about your experiences? Yes, Pat, uh, I do applaud the uh, importance of group work. I have less of it in my courses just because they're, um, they're, they're the core kind of co courses and but uh, there's, I have one or two small assignments that require students to work together in terms of like working together to organize a discussion on records in the news and what's going on in the industry and then they lead a discussion and it's as much as it's an extra discussion uh, each week for some students, uh, I get really good feedback on on how 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 wonderful that is and and how much they enjoy it. So 
uh, absolutely. I don't. I probably don't do, do as much group work as you, and and that's 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 great about the program. Some courses will have group work and some don't. But yeah, to to your point, uh, it is important because in the real world, we have to work with with people. And I think um, as a student, I've had um, a group project or two in Lisa's classes, and I'm actually working on one right now um, in Josh Zimmerman's class. And um, I've noticed that we've always gotten our group assignments uh, pretty much right off the bat, if not like the first week, the second week of the semester. So we've always had plenty of time to get together. Um, I've done uh, right now we're using a Google Doc um, and communicating through email, but I've also done WhatsApp. I've done um, like a Google Hangout um, to, to get us all together. And the time zones can be challenging, but um, I've actually had group projects where we're all on the same time zone, which is nice. Um, so it just, it kind of depends and it's never, um, it, it's never quite as intense as you know, like my undergrad group projects are, it's a lot easier to, um, I guess, collaborate because it's, it's one defined, um, usually subject and uh, it's, we've had a, a pretty easy time, I think, plenty of time to get it done and, and get everybody on the same page. Uh, I'm going to move on to the question from Elizabeth. It's one we often get, and there's even a page on our website uh, dedicated to this, the difference between Amara and an MLIS program. The um, MAR program is Archives and Records Administration. That's the title of the program. There's no library science in it. So when people say, oh, is it ALA accredited? It is not because ALA is American Library Association and we have no library courses. Uh, what this was was actually taken uh, from the MLIS program in a way because the MLIS program uh, has some library oriented courses, but many other courses as well. And they have a specialization in there for archives and records. And uh, there are some people who wanted strictly the archives and records and uh, there was enough demand to create this program. Uh, if you were interested in working in a library, you definitely want the MLIS, the Master of Library and Information Science. Uh, if you're looking at working in archives in other settings, uh, then the Archives and Records Administration, the MAR program, uh, is a good one. We have individuals working in archives and records and information governance. One of our um, advisory committee members we just met on uh, Monday again uh, is an information governance manager. And uh, he is, uh, uh, I think he graduated maybe in 2011 from our program. Uh, he has good things to say about it. Uh, you were previously admitted. Is that still valid? Mary, you're, you're going to have to check. Send a note to Sheila Gertrude and uh, see, but usually, uh, usually not. Usually uh, they will say maybe you don't have to send in your transcripts. I'm not, how long, uh, not sure how long they keep them. So I think that's when I call on Sheila. Sheila will know the answer. Any other questions? Well, okay, I want to thank all of you for uh, attending. Uh, we're done a little bit early, so we did have uh, some extra time, but if you can't think of any more questions now, um, okay, I hear, um, I see one here, and let me answer this before we go on. I see a couple. Uh, do summer courses cost more? No, 474 credit all the time. Uh, there is one program, Informatics, and I think that's $525 a credit, but our students uh, haven't taken any from that program. So MLAS and MARA are 474 credit, uh, no matter when you take them. And then early in the presentation, three certifications were uh, mentioned, and uh, is it required to pass? No, no. Uh, what it is is um, the people who are interested in records management would do well if they had a certified uh, records analyst or certified records manager designation after their name. So you'll see some of us with a lot of alphabets after our name. Uh, I'm a certified records manager. Certified records analyst passes three courses out of the six that the ICRM administers. Certified records manager passes all six of those. 
as students, MAR students, we have the ICRM look at all of the coursework you're taking, and they will give you credit for the five tests that cost like $100 each um, that have objective questions related to the content in our courses. They will say you've passed it, you don't pay for it, you just get credit for that. If you want to say you're a certified records analyst, you can immediately get that designation. You join the ICRM, it's the Institute of Records Managers, right? Uh, you join that immediately. If you want to wait and become a certified records manager right away, you sign up for that sixth part, it's a case study. Uh, and if you pass that, you're a certified records manager. If you are a certified records analyst and at some point you want to try for that CRM as well, uh, you can do that because your five uh, tests are automatically there in the database and all you have to do is pass that last, that last test. So you don't have a time limit that way. The other one that was mentioned is the uh, CA. It's the Certified Archivist exam. Uh, and it's uh, administered by the Academy of Certified Archivists. So uh, I'm also a CA, for example. And uh, that uh, there's only one 100 question objective test for that one. So they're not going to give you credit for that because then there's nothing else you would take. But what they do is have a requirement for coursework, even to sit for it. They have looked at all of our courses and all of our courses except internship because they can't tell what it's going to be about are pre-approved. So if you say you're from San Jose, uh, you've graduated from the MARA program, you want to sit for the certified archivist exam, you can do that. And uh, we had one student do that this summer uh, right after she graduated and she passed immediately. So what we do is prepare you for the exams. We don't require you to take the exams. For the records management one, uh, you have to graduate first in order to get the benefit of those courses. Uh, the other designation that was mentioned is the information governance professional. That one is administered by ARMA. And that one we don't have any type of agreement with. Uh, we are also Lisa and I information governance professionals. It's, it's another exam that you would um, be prepared for and take. Uh, they're redoing it again right now. And so we'll have to wait and see what the study materials will look like for that uh, because it's going to be changed somewhat. Uh, but uh, that one um, covers legal, it covers more technology than the others that I've mentioned. Uh, you should be pretty well prepared for it. But if that's something that's your goal, when you look at your electives that you can take, you want to make sure that you take courses that will help you prepare for that exam. Um, And no, it's not required to work with the population. Uh, definitely not. Uh, there's no requirement. What it is is good to have on your resume when you go for uh, an interview and uh, you're looking for a job. Um, they will take probably somebody with the certification over somebody who doesn't have it. So it's, it's a benefit to you. Okay, again, uh, well, those were good questions and thank you so much.